sometimes be overblown. Games are often described as must win when really they're just nice to win. But today, Wellington Phoenix are absolutely and without doubt in must win territory. Anything else against Adelaide United tonight and their flickering finals flame will be snuffed out. Victory though would keep that fire burning into the Liberty A League's penultimate weekend. No hyperbole here, just cold hard facts. It is 100% must win time for the home team. Welcome to Potidore Park, just north of Wellington City for this rescheduled round 16 match in the Liberty A League as Wellington Phoenix play host to Adelaide United. It's a dry, if a little cool, evening here. Midweek football, good to see a few families enjoying an early dinner. Good nutrition there. Joining me in co-commentary this afternoon, 104 cap football fern, Kirsty Yellop. You would have had a few must-win games in your distinguished career. Kirsty, what is the best way for the teams, in particular the Wellington Phoenix, to approach a must-win match? Yeah, thanks, Piney. I mean, for me, you want to start on the front foot, you know, you want to get that ball moving and get going forwards and create as many goal-scoring opportunities as you can. Take some shots from in and around the box and, and get numbers in the box as well and just really go for it. Well, the conditions could hardly be better as the two teams make their way on to Potidua Park. Some late afternoon sunshine still well and truly in evidence. There's a light southerly breeze blowing that'll come from right to left on your screen. Macy Fraser has been the architect of some pretty spectacular moments for Wellington Phoenix this year. Hopefully more from her tonight. It's been pretty slim pickings for Wellington Phoenix lately. The win in Western Australia punctuated a, a, uh, a run of four losses, including here on Sunday against Sydney FC when the Sky Blues were 4-2 victors. Four changes to the Wellington side that lost 4-2 to Sydney on Sunday. In come Hayley Davidson and Emma Main, who were rested for that game, while Kate Taylor and Isabel Cox are promoted to the starting side. Hope Breslin, Mickey Robertson and Manai Elliott revert to the bench. And teenager Daisy Brazendale drops out of the matchday squad. Still no Annalie Longo. The skipper continues her recovery from injury and has now missed the last five. And Brianna Edwards remains absent for personal reasons, so Amy Danielli is again the reserve goalkeeper. Two changes to the Adelaide United side that lost 2-1 to Brisbane on Saturday. In comes Zoe Tolland at right back and Alani Janczewski up front in place of Jenna Holtz and Chelsea Dorber who drop out of the matchday squad. Sarah Morgan comes back onto the bench and there's a return for Chrissy Panagaris. She's recovered from her quad injury. Referee tonight, Michaela Ryan, assisted by Heloise Welch and Alice Clipsham. Beth Rattray is our fourth official. Helping with the coin toss is 14-year-old Zoe Capstick. She goes to nearby Altair College and plays for Western Suburbs. Her favourite player is Phoenix captain Mickey Foster, who she's going to have the opportunity to meet during the pre-game activities here. United States attacker Isabel Cox provided major impact off the bench in Sunday's 4-2 loss to Sydney FC, scoring Wellington's first goal and playing a major part in the second. She's restored to the starting lineup today. Ford will be her first meeting with Adelaide, having arrived in Wellington just after the first clash of the season between these two sides in mid-December. And it's a return home for New Zealand international Hannah Blake, who's played six times for the Football Ferns, most recently in 2022 against Japan. The same game in which one of her opponents today, Mackenzie Barry, made her international debut. Hannah Blake played her early senior football with three Kings United in Auckland before time at the University of Michigan and last season with Perth Glory. All or nothing for Wellington Phoenix coach Paul Temple today. Must win has been thrown around a lot, but as mentioned, it well and truly applies today. And speaking of coaches, there's one in the stands. Yitka Klimkova in attendance today, having chosen five Phoenix players in her most recent squad. Michaela Foster, Kate Taylor, Mackenzie Barry, Macy Fraser and Brianna Edwards all feature in her squad to face Thailand in Christchurch next month. Off we go, and Potty to a park. Nothing less than a win will do for Wellington to keep their finals hopes alive. They are playing in the dark strip. Wellington attacking the goal to right of screen. That is heading from north to south here at Potty to a park. The visitors, Adelaide United, 
commonly known as the Reds, are in white shirts today. Their top six hopes extinguished with their 2-1 loss to Brisbane on Saturday. But they'll be looking to finish as high up the table as possible with good showings in their final three matches of their campaign. They've lost their last three, Adelaide, but they've won four of the five previous games between these two sides. Isabel Cox in a central position early. She was prominent, as I say, off the bench against Sydney FC the other day. In terms of formation, Kirsty, it looks as though it'll be Mackenzie Barry, Tiana Jaber as the centre backs with Mickey Foster and Hayley Davidson fullback. So the traditional 4 4 2 presumably today for Wellington. Yeah, it looks a little bit like a 4 4 2 at the moment, but could perhaps move into a 4 3 3, trying to push the the wide players forward more and Kate, much higher. Here we go. Kate Taylor sets up Muddy under spit. Meyer flag eventually goes up as the Venezuelan international broke into space. She'll be key today. Nine goals this season so far for Wellington. If you're looking for attacking threats, she's the most obvious one, I guess. Yeah, definitely. She's been really good for the Phoenix this season with nine goals. I mean, that's what you want from your striker. And you just saw her then spin into that channel and she looked like she was in time and space. Unfortunately, she was offside on that occasion, but good sign so far for the Phoenix. Is Emily Hodgson, the club's latest centurion. Mallory Mullen now can't control, and it's picked up again by Taylor, who gives it away to the Japanese midfielder, Nanako Sasaki. Adelaide United with a chance, perhaps, to make some early inroads, but the pass doesn't find feet. Yeah, Sasaki is a key player for the Reds. You know, she's really solid in the midfield there. She just controls play, and, and she's a really good holding midfielder. Here's Mickey Foster bringing it out from the back for Wellington. Alyssa Wynnum with her first chance to get involved in midfield, and the returning Hayley Davidson. She pointed forward, asking Emma May to chase another returnee to the starting 11, but just a bit too much on it from Hayley Davidson. Yeah, it was well worked from Wynnum in the midfield there under pressure to get turned out and open out. I think on that occasion probably should have played main and at, at her feet so she could have got driving forwards with the ball. But Here come Adelaide through Dylan Holmes. She's been a prominent player for them and still running with the ball. Holmes goes past Jaber. Going to set the shot up, Holmes. And Riley Foster with the first piece of goalkeeping to do. But Dylan Holmes running... All of 40, 50 yards from midfield to get that shot away. Yeah, that was a really good run with the ball there. And to get the shot off on that angle was quite tough. But you saw Hodgson following in there as well, ready for anything. Good save there from Riley Foster. Birthday on Friday for Dylan Holmes. Won Matilda's cap back in 2021. Here is Hannah Blake this time in front of the national coach. He's trying to impress. Hannah Blake! Well, a couple of early opportunities straight at Riley Foster but Adelaide have certainly come out the stronger. You talked about Wellington wanting to finish and attacking chances. It's been the visitors who have been most prominent in that area. Yeah, that was a nice run from Blake. You know, little silky feet there and made it through on and got a great shot off on goal but unfortunately it was straight at Foster there but yeah, they're obviously come out too and they want to win. They don't want to end up down the bottom of the table. I guess they're fighting with Canberra United for the wooden, wooden spoon, essentially, and they don't want that position. So they're, they're going to give it everything they've got as well. Absolutely right. I've never heard of a professional team who's given up just because they can't progress to playoffs or anything like that. And here they come again through Emily Hodgson. Plays it in the direction of her captain, Isabel Hodgson. Kate Taylor steps in this time. Might have been an arm up there from Kate Taylor. Referee said it was OK. Here's Hannah Blake's effort. It was uh, sort of opened up for her a little bit as she ran goalwards. Good noise from the Yellow Fever who have clearly knocked off work early on a Wednesday to get here. We're watching their team do a lot of defending in the first five minutes here. It's Isabel Hodgson unable to make any progress. Now Fraser looks up, sees Speckmeyer, who is again asked to run, tracked by a couple of defenders at the back. The two centre-backs, Alan Tonkin goes back to Cordia Jenkins, who is a little bit 
shaky in the clearance, but gets it done. Yeah, probably not the best clearance there from Jenkins, but, you know, they've got players back behind the ball now, so she's done the job. It's taken over in goal from Annalee Grove in recent weeks, Claudia Jenkins. Taylor doing well to win that one back for Wellington, all the way back to Riley Foster. Now Barry on track to become the club's first half centurion, Mackenzie Barry, if she plays the remaining two regular season games, she'll bring up 50. First player to do that is Wynnum, combining with Fraser. to bring in Cox over there, but it's Alana Janczewski tracking back. Cleared by Waldus. Ball attempted from Holmes, looking for Isabel Hodgson. And Mickey Foster can't find Isabel Cox. Just the connection's not quite coming for Wellington in particular in the early stages here. Yeah, the ball seems to be bouncing around a bit and it's a little bit up in the air, not, not the cleanest of passing. And they just need to get the ball down and, and try to play feet and, yeah, put a bit more, bit of a nicer pass on it rather than just pinging it at one another, I think. Little foul by Speckmeyer on Tonkin. Given away, and here's Fraser. It was Mariana Speckmeyer on side? Was Macy Fraser on side? Knows the answer. The flag is up on this near side. I get the feeling that might have been Speckmeyer. I think that could have been offside, yeah, and it might have been Speckmeyer first. But, I mean, there was a great step in there from Macy Fraser to win the ball back and, and create that um, opportunity for the 1 2. Mariana Speckmeyer has enjoyed her matches here at Potirua Park. Goals in her last two appearances here. Six in her last six games everywhere. In fact, three in her last two here at Potirua Park. So she's enjoyed it as a venue and in a good run of recent form, Mariana Speckmeyer. Jenkins tries to get it away and is almost charged down by Emma Main. Hayley Davidson can't quite control that, but Barry ever present to tidy up. <laughs> Hannah Blake has gone down there with a bit of a knock in that challenge with Mackenzie Barry. She's back on her feet, so it's okay. Now, Kate Taylor won't be able to pick up that one. Isabel Hodgson and Matt Barry again with the vital clearance. It'll impress her national coach. Here's Isabel Cox. That's fallen nicely for the American. Speckmeyer, Wynnum and Main up with her. Cox running deep, little deflection. And I think Jenkins will get there. She will just ahead of the on-rushing Mariana Speckmeyer. Good to see Isabel Cox starting to open up and show us what she can offer in an attacking sense. Yeah, I think that's the first time we've seen Cox involved so far this game. So it was good to see her get on the ball and what she could do. Perhaps she could have gone on the outside there where there was a bit more space instead of driving inside where all the other players were. And... But Speckmeyer nearly got it off. It was a good um, save by Jenkins in the end. Here's Isabel Hodgson gets it from her namesake, Emily. No relation. Kenzie Barry again putting her body on the line and being fouled. Pretty easy one for referee Michaela Ryan to rule on there. Yeah, that's what Barry does really well. You know, she gets her, her body in the right place, her positioning well, and, and she's able to win the ball back and then draw the foul as well. Hayley Davidson back in the side at left back. Sunday's loss to Sydney FC, the first game she'd missed all season. Here's Emma Main, a goal scorer against Adelaide earlier in the season, looking to make inroads again, but forced wide and behind for a goal kick.
just sort of opened up for her. She went to play the ball into Speckmeyer and it's come off nearly, nearly for her in the box there, just couldn't quite make it. Walders for Adelaide. Picked up there by Isabel Hodge. She's dropped very, very deep, the captain. She's listed as a centre forward, but here she is battling away in midfield. Wynnum picks it up. Looking to slide Coxon. Diverted behind for the first corner of the afternoon. Good to see Alyssa Wynnum starting to grow into the game. Yeah, definitely. I think what we've just seen in the last couple of minutes is the Phoenix have started to step on and get a bit more of a higher press going. And it's definitely working for them. It's made it harder for the Reds to play out. And like you said, Hodgson's has come really deep there to try and pick up the ball and get involved. So I think that's a promising sign for the Phoenix if they can keep that up. So Michaela Foster, the captain, on set piece duty as per usual. Has the ability to use both feet from corner kick situations. Left footer delivery. It's into the six yard area. A way to win him. She thought about the, uh, the shot and then tried to line up Davidson. Still there for Barry, still there for Maine. And I think they'll eventually get it away through Janczewski. They make a bit of heavy weather of it over there. I think that's gone out, it has. So Adelaide United seem very keen on passing it out from the back. They've got themselves into a spot of bother on occasion in the first dozen minutes or so doing that. Yeah, they, they do like to play out from the back and try to build up from there. This was a good delivery in from Foster. Oh, I would have liked to see Wyndham give it, give it a crack there at the left foot. Yeah, set up nicely, didn't it, on the edge of the area. I guess she is a right-footed player, so perhaps a bit of trepidation and giving it a uh, go with the left, but, yeah, the position was good. But, yeah, the Reds do like to play out from the back, usually, but they, they do go direct as well. Or give it away against Big Boy! And just as you say that, Kirsty Yellen, they are the architects of their own demise. Double figures this season now for money on a spent by And in the 13th minute at Pottinua Park, a highly desired opening goal for a team that has to win this evening. And money on a spent by has delivered again. Yeah, exactly. That's a great finish as well by Speckmeyer. And it's like we said, the Phoenix is starting to press high. Macy Fraser's done really well there to win the ball back, and Speckmeyer's just finished it off like a strike should. And it's a great goal for the Phoenix. Seven in her last seven. Four and three games here at Pottydoor Park, and ten for the season, as you can see there. Now joint third on the golden boot ladder, but I'm reasonably sure that the personal accolades won't mean anything to her. It's the fact that her side is in the lead now that is the most important thing for Mariana Speckmeyer. Adelaide looking to bite back straight away. They've won their first corner. Let's have another look at it, Kirsty. Yeah, here it is again, and, you know, it's just a good finish. Just slots at home past the keeper. Not much you could do about that. Yeah, great work, as you say, by Macy Fraser too win possession and set up Speckmeyer. Meantime, Adelaide United have a corner. Wellington have to defend. Foster gets a punch away. And belted forward by Speckmeyer, the goal scorer, who becomes defender all of a sudden. Problem is in her own penalty area, there's nobody to chase her clearance up front, but I'm sure that's just collateral damage and getting the corner cleared. Yeah, she's done a good clearance there, but yeah, normally it would be her up there waiting for it, so <laughs> there wasn't anyone else up there. It was a good ball in from Hodgson, but the Reds just weren't able to capitalise on it. She has been such a good acquisition this season for Wellington. The first season they've been able to sign import players and Mariana Speckmeyer has filled the brief. If you're looking for a player, an attacking player, and say, right, we need somebody to score double-figure goals, you're never really sure, are you? But she has absolutely done that for Wellington, and I'm sure she'll be after some more. Here's Cox. Yeah, she's definitely done that this season, and, I mean, she's got 10 goals, and that's what you want from a striker. That's the sign of a great striker and she's had a good season so she should be really um, proud of herself and happy and pretty sure the club would be pretty happy with her too. Yeah, 12 caps for Venezuela and a real star of the Liberty A-League. I guess the trick now for Wellington Phoenix is to, now that they've scored the opening goal, make sure that they manage the game well and, and probably I'm sure the fans would be after this push for a second. Emma Main sliding in there with the latest clearance. 
Yeah, I think it's working for them with this high press. You know, everybody's on the front foot, like we spoke about at the start of the game, and, and it's working for them. But it's also about they've got to learn how to manage that as well, you know, because you can't press high the whole game. So it's about finding the right moments when to drop off and, and take your time as well. well. They drop off now and go all the way back to goalkeeper Riley Foster. Nice little turn into space from Kate Taylor. And she's fouled. Well, Dylan Holmes doesn't necessarily agree, <laughs> agree with the referee on that one. No, Dylan Holmes wasn't happy on that occasion. It might have been a little bit of a soft call, for my opinion, but it was good quick play from the Phoenix to get it going as well. Now, opportunity for... Janczewski to break into the penalty area. And Wellington scramble it away through Davidson. And Emma Vane just decides to put it into touch. There's that foul by Holmes on Taylor. Yeah, seen them not given, put it that way. Here's Hannah Black. Holmes. Dylan Holmes looking for room for a shot. Taylor gets a foot in. up with Fraser and now Speckmeyer falls to Fraser again she can't quite find Maine no, there's a lot of excitement around that little triangle Fraser Wynnum Speckmeyer yeah they're getting good numbers in there and I think they're just starting to win that midfield battle at the moment on that occasion they're not able to get the ball out and into the space for um, Maine who was free out there if they could have got that ball out there a bit earlier it probably would have been danger time for them with some nice little cohesive passing in midfield until it's broken up by Taylor. She tries to find Wynnum and can't. Blake. Isabel Hodgson, her captain, ahead of her. Again, though, Wellington do enough. This time it's a retreating Macy Fraser who wins back possession. Yeah, Blake's looking dangerous when she's getting the ball in and around that midfield area and attacking third. And she's able to drive with the ball. Yeah, her six New Zealand caps are spread across five years. She debuted at the age of 17, was in the squad that was selected to play Columbia in November, but didn't play. She's played at under uh, under 17 and under 20, or the yeah, under 20 World Cups for New Zealand. Well, it's an opportunity for her to impress today with Yitka Klimkova in the stands. Indeed, Mickey Foster's looking to do the same. She sets Speckmeyer off and she just drifted offside. Mariana Speckmeyer, but you'll have to see Mickey Foster step forward like that as well out of her left fullback position. Yeah, nice to see her drive inside and, and look to play those little penetrating passes through between the lines. Is Emily Hodgson. Yes! Into Mullen, and again, it's just about broken up in midfield by Wellington, and then Tiana Jaber just puts the big right boot forward, uh, through it to put it forward for a goal kick. Zoe Tolland on the right side of Adelaide's back four. Now Tonkin. Those battles are willing in midfield and Wellington are starting to win more and more of them as we approach the 20-minute mark. Yeah, they're doing doing good at getting uh, two players around the ball, you know, one player's stepping in and pressing and then the other one's helping out. Foster looking for Cox, he's quick, can she haul that in? She might have, she has, tracked all the way over there by Tolland. 
Isabel Cox into the penalty area. Cox straight at Jenkins. A lot of the build-up work was really eye-catching. Just couldn't supply the finish, Isabel Cox, but keen to get involved up and down that left-hand side for Wellington. Yeah, she's done really well there to, to get past her and get that shot off in the box. Fortunately, it was right at the keeper on that occasion. Like, she would have been wanting to have that one again, I think. Been too much on that one for Isabel Hodgson, the Adelaide United skipper. Davidson can't quite retain it. Fraser's back there helping out. Sasaki in midfield and free kick coming the way of Adelaide. We'll shove in the back that time on Blake and Alyssa Williams going to pick up a yellow card for that. signaled to the sideline pretty quick there so I hope everything's okay I think it's Blake that's down third yellow card of the season for Alyssa Wynnum yeah, let's hope it's nothing too serious look like just a little bit of a knee in the back of the leg there we saw Sydney FC's Kirsty Fenton suffer an ACL in almost that exact part of the pitch, actually, on Sunday, we send our best wishes to Kirsty Fenton, the Sky Blues defender, who's facing now a lengthy stint on the sidelines. Let's hope this is slightly more innocuous for Hannah Blake. There's a bit of concern being shown for her, though. Back up in a sitting position, so I think she's going to be OK. Educated at St Kentigan College in Auckland. In those World Cups, she played in the 2016 Under 17 World Cup in Jordan, the Under 20 World Cup that same year in Papua New Guinea, and the 2018 Under 20 World Cup in France. So, plenty of underage international experience for Hannah Blake to go with her six football ferns caps. Looks like she's going to be okay to continue. Yeah, that's good. That's what we want to see. I think it might have just been a little bit of a knock in the back of the leg there, but it was a great touch from her as well, you know, and she just cut in front of, it was Wynnum, I think, and just got past her, so, I mean, I guess it was a little bit of a tactical foul in the referee's opinion, <laughs> hence the yellow card. Back on her feet and back in the action, Hannah Blake, great to see. So Adelaide United will set up a free kick situation here. They've sent half a dozen players forward to join a throng on the edge of the penalty area. Sasaki is lining this one up. Janczewski is there as well, but she leaves it to Sasaki. Just a crowd of players on the edge. Sasaki's going to shoot. And wide of the mark from Nanako Sasaki. Two goals so far this Liberty A-League season, not able to add a third. Yeah, it was quite a, quite a way out, so it would have had to be an absolute screamer from, from that far out. Third season with Adelaide United for Nanako Sasaki. <laughs> Barry put under a bit of pressure from Mullen. Gets it back, though, from her keeper. And Wellington will look to play this one out. Given away just momentarily, and now it's Mullen again for Adelaide. Holmes. Now Tonkin, Ella Tonkin stepping into midfield. Tolland. Sure, and a throw down by the corner flag. Zoe Tolland on her return to the starting side today. looking for an equalising goal chipped across the six yard area Hannah Blake was closest just a bit too far ahead of her there's a 
looked like it was a cross aim for Blake, but just a little bit too far in front of her, unfortunately. Otherwise, it could have been quite a great ball. Yeah, Alana Janczewski, the supplier. She's played every game this season in her first campaign with Adelaide United, her 15th start. The other five games, she's come on as a substitute, so a pretty key part of the side. Now, this breaks to Wynnum in midfield. Speckmeyer and Main ahead. Main's off on a run, might have just gone offside, so Speckmeyer is the recipient instead. I think she was onside. Fourth wide, Speckmeyer. Still there, though, for her. And on a tight angle, Claudia Jenkins had her arm stung by the shot from Mariana Speckmeyer behind for a corner. Yeah, that was a good run from Wynnum there with the ball, and just the right time to play that pass through to Speckmeyer. Unfortunately, her touch was, took her a little bit too far there, and she still managed to get the shot off. Now it's a set piece. Second corner of the afternoon for Wellington. Macy Fraser deep towards Speckmeyer. Help back in towards Cox. Jenkins is there. It's a set move. Mullen's going to chase after this one. Davidson's gone all the way across. They lose sight of the ball just momentarily. Then Mullen loses her footing. Foster breaks forward, looks up, sees Speckmeyer, tries to bend one into her path and does it brilliantly. Jenkins is there. Good goalkeeping from Claudia Jenkins. Emma Main's going to try and make it difficult. What a ball from Mickey Foster. That was an amazing pass from Mickey Foster. Right into the path of Speckmeyer. It was great. Jenkins came out and made a great save. She has 15 New Zealand caps now, Michaela Foster. The national coach would have enjoyed seeing that from her. Here's Alyssa Wynnum. Can't quite find Speckmeyer with a threaded pass. Hodgson. Played forward by Janczewski, but too far ahead of Mullen. There weren't, weren't a lot of players forwards for Adelaide on that occasion, so it was a bit hard to find somebody's feet there. So as previously mentioned, Mickey Foster, Kate Taylor, Mackenzie Barry, Macy Fraser, all out there and all included in the Football Ferns squad for the upcoming games against Thailand and Christchurch. First games on home soil since the World Cup last year. Hayley Davidson sets off. Main. Little nutmeg and it falls her way. Emma Main looks up and just not on the same wavelength as Mariana Speckmeyer. And it all fizzles out somewhat, but good energy from... The local, Emma Main. Yeah, showing some confidence there to go for the nutmeg and keep going. But yeah, just not on the same page as Speckmeyer on that time, on that occasion. Here's Isabel Hodgson running towards Janczewski. Little one-two, and it's well done. Here's Isabel Hodgson bearing down on goal. What a save by Foster. I think that's going in. But Riley Foster said, not on my watch, to it over for a corner. Yeah, this was a great strike from Hodgson, and, and what a save from Foster. That was definitely going in if she didn't get her fingertips to that. Three goals this season so far for Isabel Hodgson, the side's captain. She's going to take the resulting corner to crowded six-yard area and onto the roof of the net. Just looping over the bar on that one. Not able to get the header down, Tonkin. They're looking for her second goal of the season. They've had plenty of goal scorers, Adelaide United. 11 players have made their way onto the score sheet this season for them. Same number, incidentally, who have scored goals for Wellington. So there's plenty of attacking options for both sides. Adelaide United have only won four games this season, but three of those have come when they've gone 1-0 behind. So they do have the resilience to fight back from an early deficit. Yeah, I think early in the season uh, against Phoenix, they actually came back from one goal down and, and ended up winning 2-1. So, 
is hoping for the Phoenix. That might not happen today. And, but, yeah, you definitely can't count Adelaide out. Yeah, bang on. And Paul Temple actually made that point in his pre-game press conference saying, we really feel that was an opportunity missed for us. We were one nil ahead. We were dominating. We were... Well, I saw that thought. But just about a nervous moment there at the back. They probably should have won the game. That, that was his view. And Adelaide United scoring two goals in the last 15 minutes and, and taking all three points. Yeah, I think looking back, that was perhaps one of their better first half performances the Phoenix has had this whole season. So they would have been really disappointed with the result from that match. Emma Main's picked the ball up. Wynnum wants it. She's run about 40 yards demanding the ball from Emma Main and it doesn't come. Now Fraser picks it up. Now Wynnum might get it. Instead, it diverts to Taylor, slides it through, looking for Cox. Nice defensive work at the back there by Tolland. Yeah, Tolland read that well and was able to intercept there. I think Taylor needed to put just a little bit more on it if she wanted to make it through to Cox on that occasion. Speaking of opening goals, 11th time Wellington Phoenix have gone 1-0 up. But again, on four of the previous 10 occasions, they've gone on to lose the match, including the game you just mentioned there against Adelaide United. So scoring first hasn't always resulted in all three points for them. Davis steps into midfield. Fraser, nice little turn or half turn from Macy Fraser. Outside of the boot pass to Spinkmeyer, just a bit too much on it. Yeah, it was a nice little turn in there from Fraser and then looking for that slip ball with the outside of her foot. Uh, Alyssa Wynnum has to be a little bit careful in there. She's already on a yellow card, not suggesting at all that that was a yellow card offence. And Mullins back on her feet, which is the good news. But yeah, just walking a bit of a tight right now that she's in the referee's notebook, Alyssa Winham. Yeah, definitely. You know, and it's, we're only at the 30 minute mark, so <laughs> still a long time to go in the game. So she might want to be a little bit more careful with her challenges, but still want to give it 100%. Here's Blake. Looks to set up Mullin, but can't beat Davidson. Main, a little turn into space from Emma Main. And another. Great action from Maine, and she plays it forward. Speckmeyer's off on a run, but Jenkins is going to let that run inside her penalty area. But good vigour, good enthusiasm, and no short amount of skill from Emma Maine in trying to construct something there. Yeah, she worked that really well and, and managed to keep the ball in. I think maybe Speckmeyer should have been a bit more proactive and anticipating that it was going to come off, just gamble a little bit more as a striker, but not on that occasion. She just reacted to it, so she wasn't able to get there because... It was actually quite a good ball from, from Maine. Yeah, here's another look at it here. Just skip past everyone and then manages to keep it in and slips it into the, the channel there, which Spikmai definitely could have got to if she was ready for that. You almost feel as though Mariana Spikmai didn't think Emma Maine was going to hold on to the ball. No, that's so much I, pressure. I don't think she anticipated it at all, but... She managed to make it come off, so sometimes you've got to take the gamble, you know. Indeed. She's the recipient of a foul this time. Paul Temple will be relatively happy as we approach the 35-minute mark. This team's got the goal that has them ahead. I'm sure he'd love another before the break. Taylor going to deliver this one towards Cox. Comes down for Speckmeyer. Mariana Speckmeyer. Now Cox! And deflected behind for another corner. Oh, her eyes would have lit up as about Cox that time. Yeah, Speckmeyer's done really well here. It was a great touch to get the ball out of her feet. And then it's just fallen to Cox on the edge of the box, and the shot was blocked from Wardross there. Good block in the end. Mickey Foster again, looking into the sunshine. Whee! Into the crowded area, Speckmeyer! Just wide from Mariana Speckmeyer. Gee, she's good in the air. <laughs> really, really powerful. Just wide of the mark. Yeah, I think 
It was a great ball in from Foster again, what you expect. And then, yeah, Speckmeyer's just all alone and free there. You could see she's disappointed with not getting it on target, but it was a great opportunity for the Phoenix. Hayley Davidson's in a bit of a foot race here, but ball goes over the sideline. Wellington have the joint most headed goals this season in the Liberty A-League with nine. Adelaide have conceded the most headed goals, so yes, Mariana Speckmeyer might sense that perhaps her aerial threat could pay dividends today. Yeah, well, it nearly did on that occasion, so I think she'll be looking for a few more of those opportunities. Holmes. Nice ball from Sasaki. Wide right, now is Tolland. And brother, it's Janczewski over there. And Wellington defence get it away. Yeah, it was a good play from Adelaide, able to open up and get the ball down that right-hand side. Not cleared, though, for Wellington and Adelaide United. What sense? Another opportunity here. It's found its way to the penalty area, but now they'll bring it away. Wynnum and Fraser together again. Speckmeyer inside her own half, so definitely onside this time. Fraser's off on a run, gets a return pass. Emma Main sprinting into the penalty area. Fraser tracked all the way by Tolland. Across the six-yard area, Main. Well, another opportunity created this time by Fraser. Emma Main with a good run towards the near post. And a corner results. Yeah, that was great play from the Phoenix there. Fraser finding herself in space and then just able to get the cross in and a nice cross in too behind the defence. Good defensive work from Emily Hodgson. She's been there and done that, has played all but six minutes of the season for Adelaide United, her eighth season in the Liberty A League, 100 games for the club. Just a cheer from the crowd there as Wynnum had to run back beyond halfway to pick up his shin pad. Corner delivered. Again, it's an aerial threat, and again, it'll be a corner headed behind. This time by Isabel Hodgson. She's back defending the centre forward. I'm sure Wellington would have done their homework on the stats I mentioned before in terms of Adelaide being a bit susceptible to, to headed goals. Plenty of elevation on all of these corners. Yeah, Foster's putting it right in the goal mouth, right on top of, on the keeper. They're looking into the sun now as well, which makes it even more difficult. Delivery's good! And bouncing in the six-yard area, back to Fraser. She'll try and recalibrate. Mullins done well, though, to rush her. And that's going to roll be on, does it? No. Macy Fraser keeps it in. Wonderful skill in front of her national coach from Macy Fraser. <laughs> yeah, that was good work there from Macy Fraser. Main looking for Speckmeyer. All but, but a really good intervention from Tonkin needed to be as well. Enjoying this passing movement from Adelaide United. They're a slick side, and here they come now through Holmes. Looking for Blake on this far side, just a bit too much on it, but Hannah Blake will haul it in. Gets help from Hodgson. Emily Hodgson. Isabel Hodgson lets it run. Mackenzie Barry hangs it away. Adelaide have been able to find, you know, a bit of space out on that right-hand side down uh, the Phoenix's left-hand side and it's, they've looked really dangerous when they're able to switch the ball around and get it out there and get the crosses in the box. So far they've been looking for some early balls in behind the defence and between the keeper. It hasn't quite come off for them just yet but it does look dangerous when they get it out there. Yeah, they're certainly using that side as often as they can, aren't they? Might have another opportunity here. Holmes involved. Isabel Hodgson involved. Wide of the mark from Isabel Hodgson that time. Hands to the face and just a shake of frustration on those hands. Yeah, she's definitely been their most dangerous player, Hodgson. And she's had a couple of chances now, so I feel like she's starting to get just a little bit frustrated. She wants that another one so she can get it in. And yeah, she's definitely looking really good for them, though. And 
the most likely to put one in the back of the net. Into the final five minutes of regulation in this first half. Still plenty of sunshine on the backs of the players out here at Potidoa Park. One goal so far. We've had an average of four goals a game here at Potidoa Park. Four games so far, 16 goals. Nine for the Phoenix, seven by opposition teams. Sydney FC scored four of those, admittedly, on Sunday. But Wellington have enjoyed playing here. Janczewski can't control. Main tidies up. Riley Foster looking for an outlet. Decides to go long instead. Isabel Cox will set off to put some pressure on Tolland. Sasaki. Her pass is cut out. Win him to Speckmeyer. Now Fraser. A couple of options, including Cox to her left. And Speckmeyer, she slides her in. And flag up on this near side. Again, Mariana Speckmeyer had just drifted into an offside position. Yeah, it was a nice little triangle play there. I feel like there was just a little bit of hesitation from Fraser on that occasion to play that slip ball. She waited a little bit. And, and that's why Speckmeyer ended up being offside. Perhaps if she played it just that little bit earlier. Sasaki brings it forward again. Her pass is cut out this time by Barry. Fraser can't control her pass though. putting pressure on Jenkins in goal for Adelaide. She does pretty well, actually. <laughs> she did do well there. It was a bit risky, but she, she's done well. And sold the, sold, the, sold um, Cox over there and managed to get the ball out. And sticking to their principles, Adelaide United of playing out as often as they can. Here's Walders, the Dutch defender. Probably the most patient we've seen from Adelaide so far this game in the build-up. Phoenix also dropping off and allowing them the time and space on the ball. Sasaki. Mullen helps it forward to Hodgson. Has to go back, though, to Tonkin. Tolland is... Get up on over there, but just to get the pass away. Dinked into the penalty area, too close to Foster. This is nearly, but not quite, on occasion for Adelaide. Have enjoyed a good percentage of possession of Adelaide United. Certainly hasn't been one-way traffic by any stretch of the imagination. Jaber. She steps forward, sprints after that ball and holds on to it, but that one's a bit heavy. So, Alyssa Wynnum tidies up. And Despeak Meyer continues her run. Now, Fraser looks up. Wynnum's just offside, I think, but had tried to angle her run. Still there for Wellington through Emma Main. Nearly away by Adelaide. Fraser tries to get a foot on it. Walters does well to deny her that opportunity. Wellington again, though, for Emma Main. Not sure Davidson wanted that one back, and it's all fizzled out for Wellington that time. As we hit the 45-minute mark, a minimum two minutes to be added.
Fraser. And to speak by oh, just couldn't take it past the defender. Again, Adelaide United trust their passing game. Taylor steps in. Now, stats show that Adelaide have played 100 more passes in this first half than Wellington have. So it's certainly testament to the way they want to play the game of football. Yeah, they're looking to um, play out from the back and build up and, and be patient with the ball too. They haven't really been forcing it forwards too much. And when they're able to keep it at the back, they're able to open space up and, and they've found a lot of joy down that right-hand side. It's when they have been trying to force it through the midfield that the Phoenix have been able to win the ball back in their attacking third and, and put pressure on them. Holmes tries to help it on. Foster has it. Into the second minute of added time. Winham. Again, Speckmeyer was her target. Taylor. Fraser. Winham. Taylor. Trying to bustle her way through. Kate Taylor. <laughs> trying to take the ball with her on that occasion to see if she could get in the box and get a shot off herself. Little foot in from Fraser. Illegally says the referee. That might be about all she wrote for the first half. So we've had the extra two minutes. Whistle in the mouth from Michaela Ryan who brings the first half to a close here at Pottydoa Park. Mariana Speckmeyer. The main source of goals for Wellington this season has again come up trumps. It's her goal that separates the two sides in front of a good and vocal crowd here at Pottydoor Park. Half time. The Phoenix lead at 1-0. And there we go,
Championship team is must comply with the liberty only women's term of admission and the various conditions of entry, including provisions relating to security screening and intoxication. Any spectator identified with a prohibited item or assessed as unduly intoxicated may be refused entry, evicted from the stadium, potentially banned from attending future matches, and handed over to police for further questioning. We ask you to respect your fellow spectators by refraining from illegal and dangerous activities. In celebration of diversity and inclusivity, the A-Leagues is proud to continue its pride celebration in Australia and on March 30 in New Zealand. We thank our fans for your continued support to help make football accessible, inclusive and safe for everyone. The Wellington Phoenix Pride Run will be on March 30 here at Cromwell Park as they face up against Western Sydney Wanderers for the Sister Shield Cup. Time here at Potidor Park. Please, it's sort of a Wednesday evening. The bonus midweek football for those in the Potidor region. Rescheduled round 16 clash between the Wellington Phoenix and Adelaide United. Some future Phoenix players out there on the grass at the moment. Others enjoying some half time refreshment. Mariana Speckmeyer has the game's only goal. And it came really, Kirsty, through the persistence of Macy Fraser. Yeah, it was this high press from the Phoenix here and, and Macy Fraser on that occasion doing really well to put the pressure on and win the ball back and then Speckmeyer doing what she does best and just finishing a nice goal there for her. Double figures now for Mariana Speckmeyer. She has been well worth the investment. The Venezuelan international striker. Her 10 goals have her at the top of the all-time goal-scoring charts for Wellington. Let's have a look at some of the key stats. And uh, you and I were looking at the possession about halfway down there, Kirsty, and 60-40 or thereabouts in favour of the visitors. Yeah, I think it's perhaps a little bit surprising, as you would have seen, because I think the Phoenix have definitely looked the most dangerous of the sides and, and had the better opportunities. But Adelaide has had a lot of ball at the back, and they've been playing out a lot and patient in their build-up. So a lot of passes across the back four and with their holding midfield, Sasaki, as well as the keeper as well. So. I think that's where most of the possession is. Yeah, over 100 more passes than Wellington. Many of them, though, in their own half, and that's, as we've discussed a couple of times, due to their strategy of wanting to pass out from the back. So those in the uh, the back four have had plenty of touches of the football. Mariana Speckmeyer, the goal scorer, but also a, uh, a pretty key contributor for Wellington again this afternoon. Yeah, definitely. She's looked really dangerous, especially when she gets those balls slipped through to her and she gets in behind. You know, she's able to get shots off, she's able to also combine with other players to give them opportunities to get a chance on goal. Yeah, she's been on the end of uh, a couple of passes and set pieces from Mickey Foster. That one in particular was uh, looking goal bound and here again is the goal. And she does what she does in situations like that. Just make sure that the ball ends up in the back of the net. For Adelaide United, you mentioned Isabel Hodgson a few times. She, again, has been the most likely source of goals, hasn't she, for Adelaide United? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that strike there from Hodgson was, was a great strike, and, and Foster's done really well to get her fingertips to that and stop it from going in the back of the net. But she's definitely looked the most dangerous for Adelaide and, like, most likely to score as well. There you go on that occasion, you know, unfortunately sending it over the bar, but still in a good position and getting a good shot off. We saw it in some uh, defensive uh, situations there as well. So an all-purpose captain for Adelaide United. Second half coming up. 1-0 to the Phoenix here at halftime over Adelaide United at Potidua Park.
Great to have you with us on Sky Sport for midweek Liberty A-League football. Half-time here at Potidor Park. But I expect my almost inevitably the goal scorer for Wellington Phoenix. Crowd have been enjoying some half-time entertainment. There's football foons coach Yitka Klimkova in conversation, I think, with Lily Elfeld there. The Wellington Phoenix goalkeeper who's been beset by injury in the last couple of seasons, but still a huge part of the football club. Sure, Yitka Klimkova would have enjoyed what she saw from the likes of Mickey Foster, Macy Fraser, Mackenzie Barry, Kate Taylor out there. She's um, she's had a bit to be impressed about. They've been solid, her international players, for the most part. Yeah, I think all four of them have, have been playing well tonight, and so she'd definitely be happy with what she's seen. And specifically, the likes of Fraser and Foster really kind of stood out and, and put their hand up to... You know, state claim for a starting position in that Fern squad, I think. So, yeah, I think she'd be really impressed with all four of them, but definitely those two. They all played those players at the OFC Olympic qualifying tournament in Samoa recently, which qualified the football Ferns for Paris. Matildas will be there as well. The draw being made tomorrow morning, I think you told me earlier. Yeah, I think the draw takes place tomorrow morning, so it's pretty exciting, you know, to see where the football Ferns end up and the likes of the Matildas as well. It's, it's going to be a tough one, you know. There's only 12 teams, so... It's no easy, no easy route to the final. 
Adelaide United goalless in the first half, but it wasn't through the lack of trying. They did have some chances, and Dylan Holmes was uh, an early standout in the attacking third. Hannah Blake also testing Riley Foster early on. We mentioned Isabel Hodgson, of course. So it's not as though there isn't some encouragement there for Adelaide United this afternoon. No, they've looked really dangerous when they're able to have the ball at their feet and get driving at the um, Phoenix's back line. And it's kind of opened up for them on a couple of occasions there and they've got some shots off. So far, they've, they, the first two were at, right at Foster and the last one's from Hodgson was, was a good shot, but it went over the bar. So yeah, they've definitely had a few opportunities from different players. So just to remind you of the equation, for Wellington Phoenix to make the top six. They must win this game and their next two. They also need Western Sydney not to beat Western United on Saturday. And they need Newcastle to not win both of their remaining two games. It sounds like a bit of a Pythagorean theorem in many ways, but all the Wellington Phoenix can do is win their matches. Starting with today, then Canberra on Sunday, and if they do those two things, it may well be that they have a straight shootout against Western Sydney Wanderers on Saturday week. It could be a uh, effectively a, um, a knockout game for the top six. Canberra United next, though. McCalla Park in Australia's capital on Sunday afternoon, 4 o'clock New Zealand time. We'll have it for you, of course, here on Sky Sport. Just a short delay in kickoff for the second half and that's the reason there's a patch of grass or should we say grass slash mud that is being examined by a couple of key people they're going to try and i don't know dry it out i'm not too sure what you do in situations like this kirsty bit of sand maybe yeah that's probably what i would have thought maybe if they've got some sand handy to come and try and put it in there and, and dry it out a little bit we had a situation earlier in the season where there was a similar patch of mud slash grass in the penalty area at the northern end here and pre-game, what you see at top left of screen there actually, pre-game there was a, a meeting of about 12 people all sort of looking at it. Nobody seemed too sure what to do. Here, here they come with sand and a fork and a broom. Yeah, the groundskeepers are here trying to fix the problem. So. Adelaide United won't play finals football this season. In fact, they've only played in the finals once in the Liberty A-League. That was in 2021-22 when they finished third before losing 2-1 in the semi-finals to eventual champions Melbourne Victory. The uh, garden maintenance goes on down in front of us. It's like a working bee out there, isn't it? They are working hard trying to get it fixed so, so we can get the second half underway. Maybe they should cone it off and the players should just play around it. Just not use that particular part of the ground, I don't know. An extra obstacle for, <laughs> for both teams. While we wait for the gardening to be completed we talked a bit about Isabel Cox in the first half returning to the starting side today and uh, she was keen to get involved wasn't she up and down Wellington's left in the first half yeah she's looked dangerous out there on the left hand side you know she's good at driving with the ball and and she's quick and she can get in behind as well hasn't quite managed to get a clear shot off on goal just yet but she's definitely been heavily involved in the attack and and causing a lot of problems down that left hand side and back doing a bit of defensive work there as well. She um, is playing for the first time against Adelaide United. Didn't feature in the first meeting between the two this season. I think the uh, horticulture is complete. And 
job done by the hard-working grounds team here at Fodidoa Park, and we can get underway in the second half. Still a bit of sunshine on the far side. That is the eastern touch of Fodidoa Park. Underway in the second half, Wellington Phoenix in the dark strip. Now attacking the goal to left of screen. That's the northern end. Adelaide United looking to come from behind as they come from left to right. But they'll have to do some defending in the early few seconds as Cox drills into the area. Far post, Main! Well, I'm not sure that she expected it would arrive, Emma Main. And when it did, she wasn't able to get anything on it. But good early play by Isabel Cox, who we just talked about. Yeah, that's exactly what we just spoke of. You know, getting the ball at her feet and driving at players and getting them behind. And, and that's a great cross in there. And it's fallen straight to Main's feet. I don't think she could believe her luck, and it's just skimmed past her. Wellington would love the insurance of a second goal. Cox might be the beneficiary of that pass from Taylor, but hacked away by Adelaide. Jaber stepping in like she did quite often in the first half, wants to bring Maine into the action. Speckmeyer's in the area, but only Speckmeyer at the moment. Davidson. Maine. Across the six-yard area, well defended. Tonkin on that occasion. Wellington have started strongly in the second period, though. Into the area goes Winham. Alyssa Winham tries to pull it back for Speckmeyer. Still there, though, for Emma Main. Good promising start by Wellington in the second half. Jenkins keen to get possession of the ball. One and a half minutes into the second half, and Wellington have started the stronger. Yeah, really positive play from the Wellington Phoenix. You know, they're putting the pressure on Adelaide and keeping the ball in the attacking third. Just not able to quite get a clear chance. There might have been a bit of confusion there between Jaber and Foster. Riley Foster just puts the big right boot on it and clears any danger down towards the freshly manicured patch of grass in front of us. I think Claudia Jenkins is going to enjoy being down at this northern end with the yellow fever. Not too far away from her. They enjoyed their interaction with Courtney Vine on Sunday. Vine certainly got the better of them by scoring a couple of goals. Great to have such vocal support here for Wellington. Here's Foster. Looks up. Bends one towards Emma Main. And Kate Taylor can't find the finish. Mickey Foster's incisive passing has been eye-catching tonight. Yeah, her delivery is quality, you know, both off her left and right foot, and you just see her bending it in there in behind the defence between the goalkeeper and the back four. <laughs> Wellington has certainly started the stronger in the second period. Again, Riley Foster just decides to go downtown. Blade should be OK to pick this one up and look to perhaps construct their first attack of the second half. I'll do it through Tolland. On the state and just, and Foster calmly inside to Taylor. Now Wynnum. Nice short passing by Wellington here. It's really eye-catching. Cox. I think Wynnum knew that she was going to be offside if she chased up to that one. Yeah, that was a really great play from the Phoenix there to, to get out of their own half. And nice little one-touch passing. Good triangles, plays in the right places and in between lines. It's Holmes. Cox dispossesses her. This is the kind of football that... Paul Temple encourages his team to play. Possession-based game. Looking to open up space through those little triangles you've talked about. Adelaide looking to keep the ball and build it up and thought they were going to come out down this right-hand side again, which is where they found a lot of joy in the first half. Yep, they've uh, 
finally found a way into the second half. They were on the back foot for about the first three minutes of it, but now they're starting to get their passing going again, although the latest movement is broken up. You score a goal. This challenge by Mullen takes it away from Cox, but it, only at the uh, concession of a throw. Rather theatrical from Mariana Spetmeyer, no foul in the eyes of the officiating team. Yeah, I think the ref must have just felt she fell a little bit too easy there on that occasion. Here's Waldus for Adelaide. Vastly experienced Dutch centre back. This is what Adelaide does well, you know, when they find their passing, they play out one side and they look to open out and switch play out the other side. But for me, I think they just need to be, their passing needs to be a bit quicker, the ball speed needs to be a bit faster. I think that's where it's lacking. Is Emily Hodgson. Speckmeyer, though, has seized upon this one and sets off. Could be a knee break on here. Fraser, Wynnum and Cox are all there. Fraser gets it. Cox has gone offside. Wynnum's gone offside, so Fraser has to hold on to it. It's good intelligent play from Macy Fraser. Now, has Speckmeyer stayed onside? She has. Into the area they go. Pulled back. Alyssa Wynnum. Wynnum! Off the post. That close from Alyssa Wynnum to making it two. Oh, man, that was so unlucky from Wynnum on that occasion. And now Blake's breaking for Adelaide. That was actually really clever from Macy Fraser in the build-up to that. She knew it. About three of her teammates were offside. Played it to the one who wasn't, Speckmeyer, and then this from Wynnum. Yeah, it was a great strike from Wynnum. So unlucky, you know, on that occasion to hit the post. Lucky for Adelaide that it did hit the post, but, yeah, it was really great play from the Phoenix there, and, and particularly Macy Fraser. Game's got a nice open feel to it. Isabel Hodgson just got a foot to that, but not enough to control. Just a couple of Phoenix goals in her career. Alyssa Wynnum would have loved to have added a third and given Wellington a bit of breathing space and what is a must-win match. Play it out for Adelaide and I'll stop here as Mallory Mullen is attended to. <laughs> A little bit of a sandwich there and you know it's a head head challenge so it's important to make sure everything's okay she's going to be okay to continue returned in january from surgery to fix a meniscus tear which kept her out for about five months so last thing she wants is another injury but i think it's just a as you say a bit of a bang on the head and she'll be okay to continue yeah they just want to check it over and make sure everything's okay and no concussion or anything but I think she should be all right. Melissa Wynnum, no doubt, still wondering how that shot of hers didn't find the back of the net. Instead, found the upright. Yeah, she had quite a bit of time in there to, to pick her spot, which she obviously did really well. And unfortunately, a little too well, and it's hit the post and, and gone out. Here it is now. Spec Meyer finding herself in that time and space and cutting it back to the edge of the edge of the penalty area and then off off the post. It was a great strike. Mason Fraser did well to hold the play out though, because like you said, three of the players had already run offside. I think she needed someone to peel out wide on this left hand side instead of running central and it all kind of closed her options down, so she had to delay and, and manage to find Spec Meyer in space and onside. Alyssa Wynnum's contract is up at the end of this season after three seasons at Wellington Phoenix. One as a scholarship player, two as a full-time player. So I guess she'll be in discussions 
about an extension given away by Adelaide to Emma Main. She's a long way out and just sort of sensed maybe that Jenkins had drifted off her line but couldn't find the target in any case, Emma Main. again what can she create this time Cox is off on a run out to her left a short pass instead to Macy Fraser little drop of the shoulder the shot from Fraser straight at Jenkins <laughs> we're going to see the first change of the game shortly looks like Emily Condon is waiting to come on. We're told she'll be replacing Alani Janczewski. In the meantime, Wellington look to create something again. Free kick in the centre circle for Wellington. They'll make the change now. Well, they won't have time because Wellington want to go quickly. Emma Main, clever to get away from Emily Hodgson. Runs deep into enemy territory, Emma Main, but it just gets away from her. That was nicely worked from Main there, just to get in behind, and she looked to try to cut across her defender, but couldn't quite get there, and then, yeah, unfortunately it's gone out over the byline. Substitution for so here is that change, United Emily Condon, United Adelaide's United leading. United Liberty A-League appearance maker, 102 matches for the club. She was their youngest ever player until Miley Grigg debuted this season. And I think Mickey Robertson is also going to make her way on for the Phoenix. And uh, she'll take the place of Mariana Speckmeyer. So that's perhaps a little bit surprising, but Mickey Robertson will add something a bit different up top. Yeah, definitely. Mickey Robertson, you know, she always brings a lot of energy to the team and, and she works really hard and she's fast and can get in behind. So she'll definitely bring something to the team. And yeah, Speckmeyer's done her job today. She's got a goal for the Phoenix. Yep, seven and seven now for Mariana Speckmeyer. She takes her leave. And on comes the pocket rocket. That is Mickey Robertson. Kate Taylor's done really well there to cut out that goal kick and retain possession. Four or five black shirts in the area for Kate Taylor to aim at. And it's gone behind four, it'll be a corner. Yeah, good step in there from Kate Taylor and finds herself driving into the box trying to get a cross off or a cut back. So again, Wellington set up a set-piece situation. The aerial threat of Mariana Speckmeyer is gone now, but there's still a couple of players who might trouble Adelaide's defence. Away, though, by Tonkin. Davidson and Robertson play it back out to Foster. Gets onto her left foot. Looks to swing across in and does. Emma Main was closest. Mickey Robertson's there. Across it goes. Fraser, in fact, Taylor. Kate Taylor. A good, dangerous ball in from Foster, but Adelaide nearly cleared it, only to Mickey Foster straight away, making an impact. And then Kate Taylor just putting her foot through that and smashing it into the back of the net. It's a great finish. Two goals for Kate Taylor this season, both in that goal, actually. Her previous goal came also here at Potidua Park. And with an hour nearly gone here, Wellington will feel as though the three points are certainly theirs for the taking. Yeah, they've definitely been the stronger side so far in the game. Been really impressed with the way they've played the 15 minutes we've had in the second half. 
come out with real intent, looking to create, and I think the goal is certainly nothing less than what they've deserved for their uh, first 15 minutes of the second period. Yeah, they've come out on the front foot again, and, and you know, they've got the ball down, and they're able to create these little triangles through the midfield, and, and the creative play through the midfield especially has looked really good tonight, and then they're dangerous when they get in behind. much as I'm sure he'd like another goal or two, Paul Temple. I think what he'd probably want the most is a clean sheet. That would give them the victory, obviously. Given away again by Adelaide, and Mickey Robertson seizes upon it. The fresh legs of Mickey Robertson. Who got the last touch? The Adelaide defender, says the referee. Another corner. Yeah, she's, she's done well so far. She's hadn't been on a couple of minutes, and she's causing all sorts of problems with her energy and, and her speed. You ask for impact, don't you, from your subs, and she has certainly provided that. Taken quickly again. Fraser plants it towards the far post. It's there for Barry. And Mac Barry couldn't find room for the shot. Drilled cross from Macy Fraser. That was a great ball for Macy Fraser. I mean, that was begging for her goal to be scored off of it. It was such a great driven ball. Adelaide desperate for a way back in, but it's broken up in midfield. Here is one of today's goal scorers, Taylor. That might be a bit too far ahead of Isabel Cox. So Wellington know they need to win three games of football. They are two-thirds of the way towards winning the first of them. Fraser slides it through. Emma Main is on site, but it's closed down quickly. Brings Cox in. Another corner coming the way of the home side. The wind is in their sails without a shadow of a doubt now. Yeah, you feel the game's opening up just a little bit at the moment. It's a lot of opportunities and chances to get in behind. Two more changes coming for the home side. I can see Hope Breslin and Zoe McMeekin being prepared. So Paul Temple keen to do a couple of things, I guess, inject some more energy and maybe save some players for Sunday's clash with Canberra. Foster takes. Again, it's in the six-yard area. Again, it's out to the edge. And this time Adelaide do get it away. There's Emily Hodgson. Yeah, last. Holmes. Sorry, Holmes. Holmes did well there to step in and win that ball and play the ball out early. Okay. We might be going to see that double change now. Indeed we are. So it'll be Hope Breslin on for Alyssa Winham. She'll get a warm round of applause, no doubt, for her contribution. And Kate Taylor is also going to get a rest for the final half hour or so to be replaced by Zoe McMeekin. Yeah, they both had a good game today, and I think they'll be happy with that. Obviously, Wyndham will be a little bit disappointed hitting the post, and but Kate Taylor banging that goal, and I'm pretty sure she'll be very happy with that. Breslin's first involvement is to clear the latest attack from Adelaide. Zoe McMeekin getting involved. Turned 20 last week. Zoe McMeekin, always a uh, vigorous and energetic contributor to any game she's involved in. Condon stick this one away for Adelaide. Getting back is Jaber. Mac Barry helps to clear. Cox does well. Gets it away from Tollett. Only main ahead of her. She's got to try and stay on side. She's managed it at the moment, but I don't think she is going to retain the ball. Robertson's at the far post. Here's Emma Main. Here's Robertson. Three for Wellington. And it's Mickey Robertson, fresh off the bench, who adds a third. And surely now 
Wellington Phoenix are on their way to all three points here tonight. Oh, what a goal for Robertson. This was great play here by Cox. You know, she's just absolutely done her defender and she's got away from her driving with pace and then able to slip Main in, who's managed to get away from the defender and drive into the box and just play a great ball across, squared it across in there to Robertson, who just gets to tap it home as well as herself at the same time. <laughs> well, you don't mind ending up in the net as long as the ball's there as well. And Mickey Robertson, a prolific goal scorer here in club football in Wellington, has been given her opportunity for Wellington Phoenix in a professional environment and has taken that opportunity, particularly in recent weeks. It is her third goal of the season. They've all come in the last four games. I yeah. talked about impact, exactly what you want from attacking subs, right? Yeah, definitely. You know, she's been given a few more opportunities later in the season and, and she's taken them. She comes in, she makes a difference, she scores goals and she helps create goals. You know, it's just a great team player and someone you really want on your team. And Macy Fraser's gone down here, which is of some concern for Wellington. Adelaide United want to play on. She's back up into a kneeling position and hopefully it was just a heavy challenge for Macy Fraser going to be uh, attended to by the medical staff here still one substitution available for Paul Temple if he wants to use it he's got Manaya Elliott on the bench and I guess with Macy Fraser being such an important player he might think about that yeah I'm not quite sure it was obviously a good solid challenge in the back there looks like it's her hip she's getting checked out I think she'll be all right but yeah, you definitely want to make sure you're managing your players, and I think that's why we're seeing some early changes as well. And, you know, they played on Sunday and playing again tonight on Wednesday and then this weekend. So it's a three games in seven days. Looks like Macy Fraser's going to be OK to continue. So this is the fifth time... Wellington have scored three goals in a game this season. They haven't got four yet in any game this Liberty A-League season. Talk about a sense of timing. It's exactly when you want to do it. Now, Robertson's nipped in here again and tried to set Emma Main away. Might be a bit too far ahead of her. I think uh, the Phoenix players and fans are starting to enjoy themselves on this Wednesday evening in Porirua. They're definitely enjoying most of the attacking uh, possession here. Adelaide aren't able to get forwards and haven't had too many opportunities this second half. They haven't really been able to get into the attacking third that much. Hard for them too, isn't it? It's been a difficult season for them. Just the four wins and 19 games up to this point. Finals football is not in their future. It must be hard to stay motivated. 3-0 down away from home. You probably just want the... Uh, game to end and hop back on the plane to South Australia in many respects. We are going to see a double change though for Adelaide. Sarah Morgan and Miley Grigg going to make their way on. Miley Grigg might still be 15 years old youngest ever Adelaide United player when she debuted back in December. pressure there from Cox. You see the Phoenix are nice and organised and able to have numbers behind the ball and Adelaide were able to keep it but just not play not play quick enough through the line. So Miley Grigg on for Hannah Blake and Sarah Morgan into the action for Nanako Sasaki. Fraser's back in the action, so clearly no ill effects from the earlier challenge that had her 
on the grass for a couple of minutes. Adelaide looking for something. Their captain, Isabel Hodgson, won't stop running. First touch for Greek. And now into the action for the first time, Morgan. Player down in the penalty area, I think might be Isabel Hodgson, the captain for Adelaide United. A heavy challenge from Mackenzie Barry, who has a quick check on her health. She's back up almost into a standing position. She is now Isabel Hodgson. She's just getting a bit of help from Riley Foster, but that was a heavy challenge. You often get those from Mackenzie Barry, don't you? Yeah, she's tough at the back there, but <laughs> luckily Hodgson's is up on the Hodgson is up on this occasion. As mentioned, Paul Temple would love the clean sheet. Wellington have only kept three this season. Sure, he'll be delighted with the three goals. Speckmeyer, Taylor, Robertson, all on the score sheet here tonight. And Cox might try and seize upon the latest flick on. Isabel Cox is not favourite to get that, and Jenkins does well to calmly pass it out. Yeah, they've done well to tidy up at the back there, Adelaide, on that occasion. Hodgson's back on her feet. Condon's pass, though, is a bit heavy. Here's that latest opportunity or half chance for Cox. Pretty important little touch there by the Adelaide defender. Here's Miley Gregg. Tries to bring Holmes into play, but once again it breaks down for Adelaide United. They haven't had anywhere near as many opportunities in the second half as they managed to fashion in the first half. Now they just haven't been able to connect it from from the back four or holding midfield into that attacking midfield position or or once it gets forward to Hodgson's they Hodgson they can't quite link it between her and the players beneath her. Greg's gonna get a chance to run here at McMeekin instead place the ball forward looking for her captain Hodgson. Tiana Jaber did a good job of shepherding that one behind. Yeah, I think that's why Adelaide have struggled the second half. I think Phoenix have done really well at getting players behind the ball, and they're very organised and they're, they're compact as well, so it's really hard to play through that midfield. Hope Breslin with the flick on this time. Cox unable to control. She's nipped in here to take it away from Tolland, but it's Tonkin who takes it back to Jenkins. Forward by Breslin. Collected by Waldus. Staying true to their passing game in the defensive third. Mickey Robertson going to put a bit of pressure on, but Morgan helps them bring it away. Mullen lost it momentarily, but won it back well. Holmes. McMeekin steps in. Nice little turn by Cox. And sets Zoe McMeekin away. Emma Mains in the area, unmarked at the moment. Sliding in was Melda's had to do as well because Emma Main had a clear sight of goal there. Yeah, that was a really good defensive challenge there to stop Main from scoring. Yeah, 
is Condon for Adelaide. Mullen. Now Greg. Hasn't managed to get that in. Manaya Elliott is going to get the last 15 minutes or so here as the fourth and final substitute for Paul Temple. Macy Fraser, we believe, is going to be withdrawn. Here's Greg. Adelaide might try and find some joy out on the left-hand side, but Davidson steps in. That'll roll over the touchline, and that'll be an opportunity for Manaya Elliott to make her way on. Substitution for the Wellington Phoenix. Coming on, number 21. Joined the Phoenix Academy from Melville United last year. Captain New Zealand at the Under-17 Women's World Cup a couple of years ago. And she'll take the place of the, again, excellent and very popular Macy Fraser. Yeah, she's had a good game today. She's worked really hard in the midfield and, and been a real key in their press and winning the ball back high and creating opportunities for others. A smile as she leaves the field. Handshake from her coach. Coaches, plural. And Manaya Elliott going to have an opportunity to play the final 15 minutes or so here. Great opportunity to take Kirsty to give some players some minutes, but also to rest some players ahead of a, a trip to Canberra. Yeah, definitely, especially when you're 3-0 up as well. It's a, a good time to bring some players on and, and give others a rest, and it's nice for them to get the opportunity too in such a, a good game for the Phoenix. I think we're also going to see the fourth and final change for Adelaide United too. We'll get to that in a moment as Greg's off on a run. Here's Miley Greg. Can she set something up for Adelaide across the face of goal? And Isabel Hodgson was arriving. Good intent from the youngster, Miley Greg. Yeah, it just opened up for her here and found herself in a bit of time and space and behind. And oh, not quite sure if she was going for the shot, shot or the cross, but it was a great ball across the box. So Isabel Hodgson is going to make way for Chrissy Panagaris. Great to see her back after recovering from that quad injury. Isabel Hodgson, I've been impressed with her. Captain of the side, leading by example, hasn't given up, has kept running. Yeah, she's been one of Adelaide's best today, and I think she was just a bit unlucky there with the ball coming across the box there. She could have perhaps got on the end of that one, but she's definitely put in a good shift today for Adelaide. So a full suite of substitutions utilised by both coaches. Front four for Wellington now, Robertson, Elliott, Main and Cox. Yeah, I think we've seen the Phoenix drop into a 4-4-2 formation in the second half, which is similar to what we saw last week in, um, against Sydney FC. I guess the other thing that Paul Temple now has is a bit of a headache when it comes to selection. He, you know, has players who are in form, who want to play, with two massive games coming up, potentially. Canberra, obviously, on Sunday. What they'll need, Wellington, is for Western United to do them a favour and not lose to Western Sydney. If that happens... And Jenkins is at the edge to collect this one. If that happens, and a couple of results involving the Newcastle Jets also go Wellington's way, then the season stays alive for them. Yeah, it definitely does. Well, here's Elliot, an opportunity, maybe her first or second touch. Manaya Elliot. Just a bit of confusion in the Adelaide defence, but they, I think, have just about got the, got their way out of it. Yeah, Manaya Elliot with the opportunity there, with her first or second touch of the game, she would have been. Eyes would have lit up a little bit. Here's the 
is Greg for Adelaide. McMeekin is going to get the better of her, I think, out for a throw. And as we tick over 80 minutes, the long-held tradition of Wellington Phoenix fans celebrating a lead with 10 minutes to go continues, and it's happening all around the ground. This bloke in the middle, he's going to burst his shirt on. How's he going to get that off? Oh, that's awesome. It's a cool, cool atmosphere here tonight for, for the girls. And there he is. <laughs> he's managed it. Good on you, mate. We've well, lost part of your clothing there. I'm sure you'll collect it. You love to see it. Mickey Foster now in that midfield role. Yeah, she's moved obviously into that central role when Kate Taylor's gone off. Now she might have the opportunity to get involved in an attacking sense. Main's on the shoulder of her defender, but now Robertson is involved. Gee, she's been energetic since she came on. Foster in a battle there with Morgan. Morgan wins that particular little clash. But Wellington will have a throw. In fact, now it's off the Wellington player last, so Adelaide will have a chance to clear their lines. I guess a big win too rather than just a scratchy 1-0 or something like that, also gives confidence to a side as they seek two more wins. Scoring a lot of goals is clearly helpful. A solid challenge there from McMeekin. <laughs> She's done really well. But yeah, definitely winning 3-0 is a really big confidence boost for the Phoenix and something they definitely need going into these last two games when they must win. I guess they're playing knockout football about three weeks early, aren't they? Yeah, they've just started. Yeah. Started tonight. Yeah. Walters can't quite get the connection she was after there. It's with Foster again. Inside the defender looking for Cox. But I think Tollin's going to get there OK and get it back to Jenkins. That was a good clearance from Jenkins into Holmes, and she's able to secure it, and now they're out the other side. Well, the space was starting to open up, but that's a really good defensive tracking run from Manaya Rally at there as Emily Hodgson broke forward with it on the far side. Ground here at Potidoor Park now completely in shade. There's a bit of sunshine on the far side there. Final slivers of the Wednesday evening. The sunlight here. Games just started to slow down a bit these last 10 minutes and, and with all the changes as well from both teams. on Breslin from Dylan Holmes. It's a little bit of a lazy late challenge. <laughs> Not too much in it, so Breslin's back up. And pressure from Adelaide too, they haven't let their frustration get the better of them. It's been a pretty clean game, all things considered. Just the one yellow card from memory handed out to Alyssa Wynnum. Here's Davidson. Robinson's off on a run down the right wing and is fed now by Davidson. She's on side. Elliott's in the area and Main. Cox arriving across the six-yard area. Manire Elliott can't divert it goalwards. 
That oh, was a great run from Robertson, showing how quick she is, and look at her go, she's in behind, and then a nice little early cross in there from Manaya Elliott. Adelaide now come again from Holmes. This is Greg. Mullen. Again, Barry with the defensive intervention. Just stepping in at the right time and able to win the ball back. Adelaide looking for what would now only be a consolation, surely, but they're not even going to get that. Not on this occasion as Foster brings it away. Composed play in Wellington's midfield from Mickey Foster, who has been very, very good today. Yeah, showing her strength on the ball there and, and experience just to keep it and, and secure the play for Wellington. McMeekin, you won't get anything less than 100% from her as she charges through the middle. And just can't find the right pass for Emma Main. In many ways, you kind of hope Zoe McMeekin might just keep on going there. Yeah, it really opened up for her. She had a lot of time and space on it. She probably could have kept driving a bit further and, and then made her pass. Emily Hodgson for Adelaide behind a couple of her teammates but collected and now Grigg is in the action again onto the roof of the net unfortunately from Miley Grigg well the table doesn't really matter at the moment we know Wellington's equation is just win every game but this win will take them to 25 points and into eighth place on the Liberty A-League ladder they'll jump over the top of Brisbane Raw and Perth Glory neither of who can make the finals. They'll be one third of the way there. The target is 31 points for them. It's a live ladder there, thanks to our terrific graphics team. Shows Wellington up into eighth position. And Mickey Robertson's doing some defending now. But the ever-present Mackenzie Barry is also there. And a robust challenge from Panagaris. Nothing wrong with it, though, says the referee. Elliot nips in, so does Main. Well, Emma Main's got 90-odd minutes in her legs, so she's doing well to still be chasing deep into the game. Yeah, she still looks like she's full of energy out there, pressing and working hard. Ninety seconds of regulation left, and what we're told will be a minimum of five extra minutes. behind there from Audra, able to split the, the two defenders and get it in behind. So Phoenix coach Paul Temple now cutting a fairly relaxed figure on Wellington's bench. His assistant Callum Holmes is still biting his nails on the edge of the technical area. I'm not sure he should worry too much with a 3-0 lead in time. Just about to expire, that's gone behind for a goal kick. There's Paul Temple left of screen. Very happy with what he's seen, his team will jump on a plane on either Friday or Saturday. Head to Australia's capital, that game on Sunday afternoon 
4 o'clock New Zealand time against Canberra United. That'll be must-watch TV. We'll have it for you here on Sky Sport. Confirmation of the extra five minutes minimum as the 90 minutes ticks over. Here's Robertson away again. Emma Maines in the centre forward position. Slid back. Mickey Foster arriving. Mickey Foster! A captain's knock today from Michaela Foster and capped off with Wellington's fourth goal. For the first time this Liberty A League season, they have more in one game. It has been an emphatic performance here at Potidua Park this afternoon. Yeah, what a finish from from Foster on that occasion and it's and it's Robertson again who's causing problems she's in behind and she gets that ball right across the box perfect timing for Foster to run onto and slot it home it's a great finish took a little deflection along the way there too not sure who that came off but it was on target and it's definitely Foster's goal yep just her second all-time for Wellington and her first of the season so Wellington now have a dozen different goal scorers this season and it could hardly have gone any better for them today. You spoke right at the start of the game, Kirsty, about how you deal with must-win matches. You said you've got to get on the front foot. You've got to play with attacking intent. Well, 4-0 tells the story, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. And I think that's 100% what we've seen from the Wellington Phoenix today is they have been on the front foot the whole game. You know, they've really taken it to Adelaide and and they've been pressing high, they've been working hard, and they've been really trying to get players forwards and get them in the box and get these goal-scoring opportunities. 4-0 is definitely a deserved scoreline for them today. And what a confidence boost as well for this side who still firmly believe that finals football is on the cards for them. You can hear the cries there from Riley Foster. I think let's not let one in now. Let's go to the end. And they do, and they bring this one away. Well, they just about do. And then a scuffed shot from Morgan and Riley Foster. Well, she wasn't sure. I don't think whether that had gone outside the penalty area or not. Just had to be a bit careful, but it's ended OK, I think. Yeah, I think it looked a bit touch and go there for a minute. It was pretty close to the line and the edge of the box. Wellington seeking a fifth, Manoir Elliott. And a foot race over there with Hodgson, and it's eventually gone behind for a goal kick. Yeah, I think that was perhaps pretty close to the line. It was definitely on the line. A bit of a dodgy moment there from Foster. Largely shirtless, yellow fever are in fine voice. And why not? They've witnessed a really good performance, but Adelaide might have the final say here. Panagaris can't find room for it. And even now, Mac Barry says, no, I'm going to snuff that one out too. Yeah, a really good defending from Barry there. She's just got her body in between the ball and the player, and she's won it back and, and managed to clear it for the Phoenix. to the final minute of the added five minimum. Phoenix players still chasing, still harrying, still hassling, still very keen to keep that clean sheet and keep the ball up the northern end. Calm again from Foster. Riley Foster might just get rid of this and does. Breslin with the flick on. Cox sets off after it, but the job is very nearly done for Wellington Phoenix. As they one final little cherry on top, Manai Elliott has main outside. We're in the hands.
hands of the referee. Breslin lifts it forward. It's through to Jenkins. Mission accomplished for Wellington Phoenix. They have won a must-win game in emphatic fashion. Mariana Speckmeyer, Kate Taylor, Mickey Robertson and captain Mickey Foster on the score sheet. It could hardly have been more comprehensive in a game where performance was probably not as important as the result, but they provided both here. There's your full-time score. Wellington Phoenix, four. Adelaide United, nil. Well, job done today, Kirsty. Job partially done as far as keeping the season alive is concerned. But how much confidence will they gain as they head to bottom place Canberra United to try and repeat the dose on Sunday? Yeah, that's massive for the Phoenix today. You know, a 4-0 win as well and four different goal scorers on the day. I mean, massive confidence boost for the team and they'll take that with them going to Canberra and, you know, that's definitely another must-win game for them, but it's one that they definitely can win. So hopefully they'll be able to take some confidence from this game with them and, and be up for it again on Sunday. Going to get the chance to hear from both captains shortly. And we can go down to Adelaide United captain Isabel Hodgson. Isabel, thanks for joining us. Tough uh, afternoon for your side. How do you assess the performance, though, from your team this afternoon, which seemed to me anyway to be all you had to give? Yeah, I think um, overall it was super frustrating not to get a result from that one. I think we had a really good first half. Um, kind of our mistake gave them a lead. Um, and But, yeah, we just didn't score any goals, unfortunately. But, yeah, overall I'm pretty disappointed. I think we didn't deserve to lose 4-0, but um, credit to Wellington. They put their shots away. The position and, uh, and passing stats would suggest that you, you uh, played a, a huge part in this game. And you're right, 4-0 doesn't seem like the right score. It's a strategy, though, that you're, that you're true to, you stick to, you're keen to play that passing game whenever possible? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, we had nothing to lose, so we wanted to play the football that we wanted to play. And I think when we um, put passes together and keep possession, we play better. But, um, yeah, like I said, all the possession's great, but if you don't score goals, you don't win games. So I'm um, pretty disappointed for myself as a striker to not get anything, um, but yeah. And two games to go, you visit Sydney FC and then home to Newcastle to finish. How do you approach the final two games of this season? Um, we're just going to give everything we can. Um, I know a lot of people might be saying from the outside, like, what's the point? We've got nothing in it, but uh, for us, it means so much. So we're going to go out and try and get as many points as possible, um, play some good football and hopefully win some games. It's been great to have you in Adelaide here this evening. Isabel, thanks for joining us on Sky Sport. Thanks for having me. Isabel Hodgson there, captain of Adelaide United. And I think she's right. There's certainly a, a real desire and a drive in this Adelaide team to play a certain kind of football. And you look at the possession and stats and that sort of thing, and it doesn't suggest 4-0, but that's what we have on the score sheet. We're joined now by Wellington Phoenix captain Michaela Foster. Mickey, uh, we chatted to you three or four days ago and it was uh, a rather downcast Mickey Foster. You'd be a lot happier tonight. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah, a bit of a turnaround the last kind of two days. It was a quick turnaround, which is probably good for us mentally, I think, to kind of switch off that Sydney game and focus on um, a big three points that we needed to get. And, and we did it in front of a, a really cool crowd as well. So. Absolutely. When you must win a game, how do you approach that game? Yeah, I think it's probably the same way we approach Sydney, to be honest, and um, obviously the results are different, but like you said, we had to win, and I think we've thrived under that pressure tonight, and we knew there was a bit of a revenge game against Adelaide, like we dropped three points against them early, earlier in the season, so, um, but we know that we can play really good football, and I think we showed that today, and um, we felt really good on offence and, and defence as well, and to have a clean sheet, which is really exciting. And how much confidence do you, do you gain from the result and the performance as you head to Canberra for another must-win game on Sunday? Yeah, a lot of confidence. Like We know Canberra can score a lot of goals, and um, but we know that we can too. So I think 
again, it's a must win three points. Our last two games are so, um, but I think we can take a lot of confidence in this and to put four goals in the net's really exciting for us. So, um, yeah, we just got to do that again. Yours was nice too, Mickey. Lovely finish. Appreciate it. Thank you. Don't do that often, so it's, it's nice to hit the back of the net. <laughs> Thanks for joining us at all. As always, uh, safe, uh, safe travels to Canberra and uh, all the best for Sunday. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Mickey Foster, what a performance she put in as captain of this side. Let's have a look at some of those stats. And uh, the passes would suggest, you know, an, a period of Adelaide, or, or a 90 minutes of Adelaide dominance, really, but it's what you do with the possession, I guess. Yeah, I think a lot of that possession was across the back four and, and in the uh, holding midfield position, it, it wasn't in the attacking third, and, and that's where a lot of their passes have come from. So they were really staying true to themselves and trying to play build-up style football and stuff, but they just weren't able to connect and, and get it into the attacking third. And I guess the touches in the opposition box would suggest the same thing. 30 for Wellington, even though they had far fewer passes. Uh, just the 10 in the opposition penalty area for Adelaide United. So here is the Liberty A-League ladder as it stands now. That sixth spot is the one the Wellington Phoenix are targeting. Currently occupied by the Western Sydney Wanderers with 30 points. Wellington can get to 31. Their next assignment is Canberra United on Sunday. And you can see... 25 points, so at the risk of repeating myself, the first part of a of a three-part mission is complete. They've won their first must-win game. They've got two more to go. Canberra on Sunday. There are the match details of that. McKellar Park in Canberra, 4 o'clock New Zealand time live here on Sky Sport. And a win there, and who knows, it could be a huge match back here at Potidor Park next weekend. That's all to come, though. For now, Phoenix fans, players and coaching staff pretty happy with what has played out here at Potidua Park this afternoon. It's been a great pleasure to bring it to you. Final score here in Wellington. The Phoenix 4, Adelaide United 0.